Good morning. I will now call the November 16th San Diego County Board of Supervisors regular and sanitation district meeting to order. Let me ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. Before I call the roll, I'd like to note for the record that Supervisor Vargas is participating via teleconference. As such, all votes will be handled by a roll call vote. With that, I will now call the roll. Supervisor Anderson. Here. Supervisor Lawson Reamer. Supervisor Desmond. Here. Vice Chair Vargas. Chair Fletcher. Fletcher here. First item on the order of business is a report of any actions from closed uh, session yesterday. Let me ask County Council if there's any items to report. Yes, uh, the Board of Supervisors met in closed session um, yesterday afternoon from 1.32 to 2.03 p.m. The Board took the following reportable action. On item 30C, Department of Finance versus Commission of State Mandates, with all five board members voting aye, the board authorized County Council not to file a petition for review in the California Supreme Court in this lawsuit involving claims of unfunded mandates. Thank you. First on the agenda is non-agendized public communication. This is an opportunity for the public to address the board on matters that are within our jurisdiction but are not on today's agenda. The only action the board may take is a referral to the chief administrative officer. A reminder, according to Rule 4A, members of the public that are non-English speaking and need interpretation assistance will be allotted additional time for translation. According to the county rules of procedure, we will hear from up to five in-person and five virtual speakers. Any remaining request for non-agendized public communication will be resumed at the completion of our agendized items. This time, I'll ask the clerk to call forward up to five in-person and five virtual speakers. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We have 19 total requests to speak on matters not listed on the agenda, three in-person and 16 by phone. For those that have requested to speak via phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. We will begin with the in-person speakers. As your name is called, if you could please come forward and stand against the east wall under the murals until it is your turn to speak. You will then have two minutes to address the board, and I'd like to invite forward the following individuals. Mark. Robert German, Audra, and Consuelo. And if you could please state your name before beginning your comment. <clears throat> the usual, not enough time, Mark. Let's see, cannabis, uh, there are stakeholders, it mentions, uh, <clears throat> uh, a lot of intense input from the stakeholders. Nice to know someone's making money off that. Um, bon <clears throat> the number four, Bonzo Polo Club, oh, excuse me, this, yeah, this isn't even, this is the non agenda okay. Uh, <laughs> there's so many things, uh, the weather just a couple of days ago said that uh, Seventy percent of the country is literally going to be uh, uh, experiencing freezing or less than freezing temperatures. And uh, that we're 10 degrees under what we usually are for November. So since most of your board and your actions uh, relate to global warming and climate change, uh, even though... Uh, obviously, if, if you wanted to stop murder, you wouldn't sell murder credits. They do sell carbon credits. So they're just making money. And of course, the corporations pass the cost on to us, the people. So it's nothing but a total and complete scam. Um, and its larger purpose, of course, is to control the people more and have excuses to control them. Um, so uh, yeah, 70 percent of the country is literally in danger of freezing as Biden is is taking away the fuel that people need for their homes, so we're making it more expensive. Uh, in Europe, they've already got a lot of people there freezing to death, and there will be probably an estimated 10,000 this year uh, from the absolute bullshit lying policies uh, and the Green New Deal, et cetera. Uh, there's so many other things. Um, this is just a corporation. These people are corporate officers. They are not here to, to help the public. They're here to make the corporation money at all times and look good. Out of time again. I have a slideshow, I believe. Yeah, you've seen a couple of slides already. Uh, the 19 airliner, oh, Robert German, 
the 19 airliners sitting on Lindbergh's taxiway is because Lindbergh is a 633-acre airport trying to do the jo job of a 3,000-acre international airport. The servicing of passenger airliners, freighters, small cargo aircraft, charter jets, helicopters is a losing situation with one runway and limited airspace. The slideshow shows how Lindbergh handles these different entities and its workers. After viewing the slides, does it look like Lindbergh will be able to handle the needs of San Diego air travel into the next 50 years simply by adding a $4 billion driveway, restaurants, and curio shops? The leaders in 2005 realized Lindbergh was outdated, but neighborhood politics at our outlying airports, which generate thousands of dollars in campaign funds defeated their street to strategic plan. Revisit the 2005 plan or come up with a new one and stop the waste of taxpayer money on Lindbergh and the San Diego County's outlying airports. Lindbergh is a perfect example of putting lipstick on a pig. And happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. I use the name Audra. <clears throat> it's just really sad what's going on in this place because to be dragged out the way I was and had my face slammed into the ground um, was a bit unnecessary. Um, and you guys like to come and put in your agenda stuff about free speech and how we have to, you know, engage or have free speech and no, have the government encroach on that. And um, it's just sad to know that a grown man can pull me out, drag me out that way. I've been assaulted by Nathan's staff before, as well as these officers many times. And it's so unnecessary. I mean, I might as well like go murder somebody. I feel like that would justify that kind of treatment. But it's just really sad to see you guys talk about that and you took an oath to uphold the Constitution and you can't even do that because you don't like what we say. Oh, I don't like what you say, but I don't do that to you. Never assaulted you. But I've been assaulted by your staff, Nathan, by these officers, and nobody cares. It's really sad. I mean, you're chairman of this county, and you can't even hold you guys' selves responsible or accountable for the things that you do, because it doesn't warrant that. It doesn't. I never got an apology from your staff. My arm still hurts. That was unnecessary as well. So at some point, I hope you guys. Next speaker, please. Your time has expired. Next speaker. Consuelo. Um, yeah, it's very disappointing how these meetings go. We speak and speak and speak, say the same things over and over again. We get the pattern of how you guys do things. We call you on your bluffs. You don't listen to the people. You paint us to be these crazy lunatics as if we're, you know, just here, like we have nothing better to do. We are the few standing. We are the few who are c calling you out and, <laughs> I mean, this is not easy. And you have no respect. I mean, these people, these people, what they did to Audra yesterday, these deputies, you guys took an oath to the Constitution. And you're not upholding it, really, honestly. And this is where, this is where our government, this is where our country is going, this is where our planet is going. People need to wake up. They need to understand that this is, this is really sad. I don't even, 
I don't even know what to say. It's just so sad. A hundred pound woman being pounced on by a 200 pound man for her freedom of speech for, she didn't even do anything really. It's getting bad. It's going to get worse. They have an agenda. They're going to fulfill it. You need to get involved, people, honestly. It's, I mean, we're, we're paying close attention. And to some of you who are saying you are paying attention, you need to look closer. You need to really see what they're doing. Thank you. We will now hear from those that requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to uh, speak, you will be unmuted and we'll hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. Again, I'd like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking. We will begin with our first caller, and again, if you could please state your name before beginning your comments. Hi. Good morning, Board of Supervisors. KB Strange here. I'm a pharmacist. I practice in the unincorporated region of the county. And I strongly feel that bringing more marijuana businesses to the back country is unwise. The repercussions of marijuana businesses is that these businesses obscure the problems associated with the products that they sell to the public. Maybe I can explain. I'm bringing some important health information to you today that I received from the University of California San Francisco Tobacco Center at a symposium entitled, It's About a Million Lives. I'm sorry, it's about a billion lives. Researchers at this symposium reported on the debilitating effect of inhaled tobacco and marijuana products. This inhalation of tobacco or cannabis smoke or vapor is a predictor of heart disease. We've known for a long time that smoking and secondhand smoking compromises the cardiovascular system. And now more recent research has showing that the similar effects are from, uh, are from cannabis smoke or, or cannabis vapor. Tobacco and marijuana smoking and vaping is an extraordinarily costly situation for individuals and for families, and it undermines the county's strong well -fill, well, live well focus. Thank you for listening. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Oliver Twist here, talking today about some concerns I have in East County. After learning that the Sweetwater Authority commenced the water drawdown yesterday at Loveland Reservoir to send water downstream to Sweetwater Reservoir, my husband and I took a drive through the backcountry of the Hisa and Willow Glen out to Rancho San Diego. We ended up at the Rancho San Diego uh, at the Sweetwater River Bridge near Campo and Hamishaw Road, trying to see how much water was flowing downstream. I was extremely shocked at the condition I found that historic bridge and watershed to be in. It is overgrown to the point of being a severe fire hazard. I'm not sure who controls the right-of-way or has responsibility for management, but dire attention is needed to clean that area up. It is a critical habitat area, as well as a much-loved hiking trail to get people engaged in multimodal transportation, like hiking, biking, and running. So I'm asking you today to please take action if it is within your jurisdiction to do so, and if not, to reach out to the agency of record to urge proper management and fire safety. Lastly, not sure where the county fits into the picture, but I am gr gravely concerned about the water drawdown at Loveland by the Sweetwater Authority. While they posted on their Twitter that it was cheaper uh, rates for customers in past meetings, they've indicated that the water was necessary to maintain levels need needed for aspirational sand mining operations near the Sweetwater Reservoir. Apparently, this is a serial problem in government, gaslighting the public with alternative stories to hide the reality. The water drawdown deeply exacerbates the fire safety conditions and harm to ecosystems, as well as defaults on the promises made in the 1996 land swap with the U.S. Forest Service to maintain shoreline levels and sunrise to sunset access. 
please intervene where you can. And thank you, Supervisor Anderson, for your past letter. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning, Board of Supervisors. Mark Wilcox here. I'm a father and grandfather who is very committed in my volunteer work to support young people, especially in their journey to prepare to make meaningful contributions to their families and others. I am concerned with the uptick in drug use, drug overdose, and mental health crises we're currently facing. Yesterday at the County Marijuana Prevention in Initiative Work group, a parent recounted the harrowing experience over the past seven years of his son's mental health struggles that were a result of his cannabis vaping. The tale included multiple hospitalizations, relapses, great financial expense, suicide ideation, creating homelessness for their son and in their family. And there were periods of living on the street that turned life-threatening that were also a part of the seven-year struggle. The increasing strengths of marijuana's THC component are chilling in their present day and long-term consequences, especially to young adults and those who care about them. Important research arrives nearly daily to parents, schools, public health educators regarding the connection of marijuana use to teen and young adult addiction, mental illness deterioration, and suicide. As the Surgeon General's rare warning and call to action earlier in the year indicated, now is the time for those who surround young people and shape their day-to-day -day lives, schools, healthcare system, media, and government, to put young people first in their decision-making. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning, Terry Ann Skelly here. Um, parents like me have become increasingly concerned that the interests of marijuana businesses are taking precedence over young people. Our young people need protections that come from the carefully considered, thoughtful, and research-based policies, not policies recommended by those who want to profit from the use of addictive drugs. drugs. So I ask that you look at any changes to the county municipal code that increases marijuana businesses in the unincorporated areas to do so with the lens of protecting youth. The right questions need to be asked if we want answers that will interrupt the continued drug use upturn that shows no signs of decreasing. For example, why did Board of Supervisors change the marijuana business application process so that the marijuana businesses operating plan appearance and size are not reviewed by the impacted neighborhood planning group like other businesses are? Why is a marijuana business allowed to expand their establishment by 10,000 square feet by only going through an administrative review, again, enabling procedure not accorded to other businesses? We need the Board of Supervisors to really meet their goals of transparency and equal access to mean that youth and their loved ones are listened to when we bring our concerns to your attention. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, and we'll go, for, we'll go to our final caller for the morning session. Paul Hinken, yesterday you had my friend Audra removed from the chamber, Nathan. In fact, one of the deputies cuffed and released her immediately, manhandling her along the way. Nathan, this would have been your third and final warning, but frankly, I don't think you were involved at this stage. I do, however, hope that you report this for investigation. The agenda overview used to be a few paragraphs. Now, with all those multi-paragraph descriptions, it sounds like a sales pitch, not an objective description of the item. The agendas from 2012 to 2017 only have a few paragraphs. It's a waste of your time and ours to be given this sweet talk, and I'm sure it contributes to the wrong impressions 
about what the real intent of an item is. This is not about free speech, but about wasted time and resources. Then there are the equity statements. Some are to the point, but since they are not included for all items, some seem, seem to degenerate into whining about the haves and have-nots. Some, like fire department or sheriff matters, or a restatement of the overview or rules already in force are probably not needed. I suggest that the agenda items be released as soon as the board letter is ready, giving you and us more time to read and analyze them. And then you can form the consent calendar after truly knowing which items are routine as per rules 2B, 3B, and 3E. I suggest the equity and sustainability statements be dispensed with unless they actually contribute new ideas. Let's save paper, time, and resources where we can. Uh, thanks for... Thank you. Your time is up. And for the remaining callers that have requested to speak on a matter not listed on the agenda, if you could please hang up and call back at the conclusion of the session. Chair Fletcher, that concludes the request for non-agenda public communication this morning. Thank you. Next on our agenda is approval of the Statement of Proceedings Minutes of the regular meeting of October 28, 2022 and the Sanitation District meeting of June 28, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion by myself, second by Supervisor Anderson. Let me ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you. Supervisor Anderson. Aye. Supervisor Desmond. Aye. And Chair Fletcher. Fletcher, aye. That motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present voting aye. We'll now proceed with the formation of our consent calendar. Members of the public will have the opportunity to comment on items after supervisors uh, have been given a chance to remove any items or make any comments. I'd like to note for our meeting today, the consent calendar includes sanitation district agenda item one and item eight will be heard concurrently with item two on the sanitation district agenda. Supervisor Anderson, are there any items that you wish pulled for discussion or comments you wish to make? Not at this time, thank you. Supervisor Desmond. Uh, none to pull, but I want to just make a comment on item two. I want to thank our park staff, uh, which I often hear from my constituents in North County. You want to see uh, this park here at the San Luis Rey River. Uh, the, this is an acquisition of 49 acres adjacent to that park, and which is a Cal, currently Caltrans uh, property. Um, beyond just simply acquiring, acquiring more uh, parkland uh, for this particular park, there's an opportunity for direct access to uh, this uh, Rio Prado Park, plus potentially from the 76, which would benefit the existing nearby, there's a Montserrat Mobile Home Park uh, on, on Doolin Road, and one of their concerns is there's only one access in and out of, of this uh, uh, planned park. Uh, and uh, this would offer, offer another opportunity, potentially. I know it hasn't been looked at completely yet, but if we can do that, it'd be nice uh, to see if this other access would be uh, appropriate into the park. And it also, it gives us an opportunity to put more of the active park amenities uh, closer to the uh, 76 as opposed to closer to this uh, mobile home park, that, which has enjoyed the serenity of a, a public road and through their property and being maintained by the public. But uh, uh, this is, uh, would, hopefully if we can calm some of the uh, concerns uh, or address some of the concerns of the neighborhood uh, for this park, it'd be very helpful. So thank you very much for that. And I'll make a motion to approve uh, the consent calendar for both the uh, regular agenda and for the sanitation district. Thank you, Supervisor Desmond. I will uh, will second that motion. Uh, I want to make some comments on item three. I want to thank our county parks and, and recreation team for bringing this forward. Uh, Calavo Park is a, is a wonderful opportunity to really add some much needed park space in Spring Valley uh, in my district. This is a dense residential area. There's a lot of multifamily housing in the area. It's near schools. Um, and there's a, a tremendous opportunity to have a place where families uh, and, and residents and, and folks from all over San Diego can go and enjoy. Uh, this area uh, hasn't had the historic investment uh, that I think the community expects, and so this is a wonderful step forward with us moving forward. Uh, it's going to have paths for walkers and runners, dog park, picnic areas, playgrounds, a multi-use field. Uh, some of the other items the community requested will be included, uh, an all-wheel area, a community garden, uh, of course, pickleball. Uh, you're not building a park anywhere these days without pickleball, so we got the pickleball. Uh, we got it. Restroom building, uh, perimeter fencing, a volunteer uh, park host site where a volunteer can live 
uh, on site and be available after hours or things that can be included in design and construction. And so really excited to, uh, to see this move forward uh, and appreciate all the hard work that is, uh, has been done. Um, on item six, uh, uh, item brought forward by Supervisor Lawson Reamer, uh, surrounding biodiversity vision and goals. There's a great coalition that's working hard uh, on these issues and we're grateful uh, for their help. Uh, with that, we have a motion by Supervisor Desmond, seconded by myself. Let's hear from our public speakers. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We have 19 total requests to speak on items on the consent calendar, four individuals in person, and 15 requesting to speak by phone. For any members of the public that requested to speak on items on the consent calendar, if you could please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. We will begin with the in-person speakers. As your name is called, if you could please come forward and stand against the east wall under the murals until it is your turn to speak. And I'd like to invite forward the following individuals, Mary, Consuelo, Mark, and Audra. You'll have two minutes to address the board, and if you could please begin by stating your name for the record. Consuelo, uh, regarding democratic values, uh, you're not supposed to be bipartisan with our tax dollars. I want you to take a minute, step back to 1971 with me, if you will. That's a time when a group of fellas, George Soros and Klaus Schwab and Henry Kissinger and the likes of them self-righteous motherfuckers, time. decided to start a club that's now called the World Economic Forum. The comments are off topic. Right from the get-go, they're No, they're not off consent. topic. Depopulization, globalization. I just did. Government and the one world Which currency. The world can control. Five. Living in their utopian world where they have a select few that work as servants below them. Well, here we are 51 years later. This doesn't have anything to do with And now we've got Klaus Schwab, the leader of the World Economic Forum, standing up telling people that he's penetrated over 50% of Canadian cabinet. You look at the World Economic Forum website. There's Justin Trudeau, Christian Freeland, Jagmeet Singh. You're not supposed to be bipartisan with our tax dollar. I mean, partisan with our tax dollars. There's nothing partisan the World Economic about Forum. It is democratic values. In every venture that they undertake in their life. How can they be running Canada for the morning? Next speaker, please. Speakers need to speak to items on consent. Mark, your outbursts are disrupting the conduct of the meeting. Your first warning. Next speaker, please. Your continued standing there is disrupting the conduct of the meeting. That's your first warning. Welcome. Good morning, Supervisor. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mary Leeskang. I am Wild Coast's Blue Carbon Conservation Manager. Uh, Wild Coast is an international team that conserves coastal and marine ecosystems and addresses climate change through natural solution. I'd like to speak on agenda item six. First, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm going to pause your time. Consuelo, your device is disrupting the proceedings of the meeting. This is your second warning. I apologize. No Please problem. continue. We'll resume your time. First and foremost, thank you. That's your third warning, Consuela. You can leave the chambers for today. I'm going to ask the deputies to please escort Consuela out. We are going to follow the rules, and we're going to follow them consistently without exception. Third time disrupting the proceedings of the meeting, you can leave. I'm sorry. Just no give worries. us a second. I apologize for the interruption. We will restart your time. Perfect. Again, I'm Mary Leesking. I'm Blue Carbon Conservation Manager at Wild Coast, and I'd like to speak on agenda item six. First and foremost, thank you for identifying the importance of biodiversity in San Diego. As noted in the resolution, San Diego is one of the most biodiversity, biodiverse cities in the country, so thank you for identifying that. One of the most biodiverse habitats that we have in San Diego are our coastal wetlands. 45% of the nation's endangered or threatened species depend on wetland habitat. These coastal wetlands are blue carbon ecosystems, sequestering up to 10 times the amount of carbon and storing three to five times the amount of carbon as terrestrial forests. They also improve water quality by natural filtration of runoff and buffer against storm flooding and sea level rise. However, the biodiversity and health of these wetlands is threatened by invasive species. Invasive species like eucalyptus trees dominate the wetlands and their leaves fall, smother the other plants below them, those plants that are the carbon storing powerhouses of the wetlands. Native plants can support 10 to 50 times as many species of native wildlife when compared to non-native plants. In addition to the outcompeting native plants and reducing biodiversity, invasive plant species alter nutrient cycling and degrade the overall health of the wetland. When degraded, coastal wetlands emit high concentrations of carbon that they've been storing for hundreds of years back into the atmosphere. The most valuable carbon sinks can become a problematic carbon source. These areas and the biodiversity they host must be conserved. 
So thank you for acknowledging and elevating the importance of biodiversity. The adoption of this resolution is a first step, and I encourage you to continue to work to protect, conserve, and restore the ecosystems that provide habitat for all the biodiverse plants and animals that are endemic to San Diego. Thank you. Use the name Audra. It's just so ridiculous what you're doing. It's totally communism. It's crazy. It's good. It's what your job is to totally destroy everything, and you're doing a really good job of that. So, <clears throat> number one, or SA01, you guys want to, you know make it so people are gonna put all these houses on their property. It's pretty ridiculous. That's your whole plan is to make everything really dense. Um, the uh, number one, marijuana is taxed so bad that it's quite ridiculous. It's not leaving them any way to make money when you guys permit and cost all these, uh, them so much money just to run their business because of what kind of business it is. They can take in like 63,000 and take home like a couple of grand a month because of all the taxing and fees that they have to pay. It's ridiculous. And um, these, uh, number four, the joint agreement, just all these extensions, it's like 23 years that this has been tr planning on going on. I just don't understand that. I mean, why are you just, like, is the project ever gonna go anywhere? Quit smiling, Nathan, you're disgusting. And this whole, what Consuelo was talking about, number five, you guys wanna adopt a resolution to waive fees for political campaign sign encroachment. Is that because you were just running and you don't wanna have to pay, Jim? Hmm? Probably, yeah, right? And you talk about the First Amendment in here, yeah, and that you wanna protect free speech. And you know, without censorship, it's good or interference, or you know, restraint by the government. So interesting that you can talk that way and do the complete opposite. Mark, Consuelo's comment and her tape was totally relevant since you're a member of the World Economic Forum and it's in conflict with our government entirely. Um, furthermore, Let's see, cannabis, there are stakeholders, a corporation making money. Um, she, when people vote for cannabis to be legalized, this is not what they meant. The Bonzel Polo Club estate, it's owned by the city and in perpetuity it says, you guys are responsible for upkeeping it. Um, as you own more and more private property, which in the original constitution, the, the government wasn't supposed to own any property except 10 or 12 square miles around Washington, D.C. It's totally unconstitutional, but that's how far into the corporate uh, bullshit authoritarian corporation, corporate authoritarian government we are. Um, the political signage, as <clears throat> Consuelo was trying to say, um, and it states right here in your book, on page, on page 12, it says, um, in an effort to assist political campaign signage to help promote democratic values and norms and to help promote free and fair elections, blah, blah, blah. And this is uh, recommended by Joel Anderson, a Republican. So all of you out there that voted for Joel, who's on uh, the board of Sandag, which is screwing us for the, uh, the globalist daily, um, that, that was certainly a mistake, and, but I mean, they're all doing it. They're all corporate officers. Let's see, moving on, land use. You all need to see the, the video by uh, uh, Rosa Corey. Here it is, it, it's Rosa Corey part one. Corey is spelled differently. It's got a different name, but you can find it with this. You'll never understand what they're doing if you don't see it. Thank you. We will now hear from those that have requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you will be unmuted and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. Again, I'd like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking and we will begin with our first caller. Uh, 
My name is John Bottoff with CleanEarthForKids.org. I'm speaking on item one and item six. For item one, we oppose any recreational cannabis. Research clearly shows cannabis and THC products are marketed directly at youth, especially youth of color. Just like the tobacco industry, the goal of the cannabis industry is to create lifelong customers through addiction. The average THC content in cannabis in the U.S. is 14 to 16 percent, compared to 2 to 3 percent a few decades ago. This was done intentionally by the industry to cause addiction. Those in favor of recreational cannabis talk about jobs and profits and equity, but not about addiction. I personally know people addicted to cannabis and have seen the destruction to their lives and their families. This is not about medical use. This is about a multi-billion dollar industry's attempt to make money at the expense of people's health. We are not talking about selling books or shirts. We are talking about selling a drug that is known to cause birth defects, reproductive harms, increased cancer risk, and numerous mental and emotional issues. Cannabis smoke is Prop 65 for developmental harm and cancer. There is clear evidence that the use of cannabis is not harmless. People do not have this information. This is not about equity. This is addiction for profit with the same arguments made by big tobacco. This is about greed from an industry that doesn't care, who gets hurt as long as they make money. And as long as you go along with it, you are harming the people. People, please put people before profit. If you want to help those hurt by the criminalization of cannabis, find ways to help them without exploiting or addicting our youth. There is clear evidence that cannabis is not harmless. Please do not expand recreational cannabis. Please protect our kids. For item number six, cleanearthforkids.org supports the biodiversity resolution to protect our vital native habitats and ecosystems. We ask the county to take immediate action to stop the use of synthetic pesticides and fertilizers on county lands and property and educate and assist farmers to use safe pest control methods. Synthetic pesticides and fertilizers are petrochemicals, which do massive harm to biodiversity. Please take action to protect our air, water, and lands. Thank you from cleanearthforkids.org. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. I am the Educational Director and Founder of CleanEarthForKids.org. Thank you to the Coastal Commission and all working to protect our coast and ocean, water, wildlife, public lands, and our health. Clean Earth for Kids supports statements made by the San Diego chapter of the Sierra Club to reject the City of San Diego's long-term plan for sea lions at Point La Jolla. Also, we are asking you, we're asking you to direct cities, counties, and all to stop allowing recreational wood-burning fires. Wood smoke can cause a heart attack, asthma attack, and stroke on the spot. And for people like me with a lung condition, this is life-threatening. Our kids, <laughs> pregnant women, as you know, air pollution uh, increases the risk of pre-birth, stillbirth, and low birth weight babies, birth defects, et cetera. Also, in o the city of Oceanside and others, Unattended wood fires on public lands are burning. Children are running in and out. We have pictures near wood fires, and they are burning. People that are burning are burning furniture, um, treated wood pallets, and leaving huge uh, nails behind. It's toxic air pollution. And also our sea lions on sea, sea Lion Island platform in the city of Oceanside, 400 feet away, are coughing. And children of color where they play and the small fishing pier and the grass are affected by a few people that are burning wood fires for fun every night. This is a pet public health emergency. The other thing we are asking is to please direct SeaWorld to stop, because SeaWorld is in the coastal zone, to stop allowing nightly fireworks that contain persistent bioaccumulative toxic chemicals, light shows, not fireworks. Thank you from cleanearthforkids.org. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Oliver Twist here. First, on item six, while biodiversity protection is appreciated, I urge you to balance those needs with the needs of real people. Far too often I see alarmism and prioritization of animals over people, i.e. the bait and switch on the transnet tax where promised projects we continue to pay for are withdrawn, but bats are slated to get our tax money for conservation in El Monte Valley. Item one, 
I now want to voice my strong opposition to marijuana in general and to specifically oppose today's recommendation to continue the transference of inspections and oversight from the Sheriff's Department to civilians at PDS. The way this industry has been allowed to devolve is shameful. It would be one thing to sell the product in retail fashion at drugstore or pharmacies and safely locked behind a counter and integrated into mainstream retail, but allowing standalone stores, some legal and many not, has turned this industry into the Wild West. In a 2018 article from Forbes, it highlighted the association of crime with the industry. A financial cannabis analyst said that marijuana at that time was a $5.1 billion industry, a figure I imagine has only grown since then. A very telling quote from that same article related um, a quote from Sonoma County Agricultural Commissioner Tony Leniger, marijuana is so valuable, men are willing to kill for it. That chilling quote alone should give you pause to rethink the decision you're about to make today. Please keep law enforcement oversight of this industry. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Paul Hennigan, Cannabis. Um, the huge a uh, $16,000 minimum license fee penalizes and discourages business. We should penalize excess use. The fee is outrageous and discriminatory for, when the licensing fee for a liquor store and alcohol has similar, if not worse, effects. It's about $849. And um, you heard today, Dr. Strange today mention tobacco having effects like cannabis. License fee is also a lot less. So please um, reduce or abolish that fee. I also think the sheriff's department should handle licensing for two reasons. First, it will help from to know the seller in case an, uh, enforcement action becomes necessary. And two, it is already set up with equipment for background checks, so we will not spend extra money on a second background check system and installation. Uh, encroachment permit fees. Apart from usually looking repulsive, political signs rarely carry any real message. <clears throat> More like vote for whoever, and usually a slogan or two. This is more like advertising than meaningful politics and opens the door to negative campaigning, which, as the last election showed, this country is sick of. If someone wants to block views or distract drivers in the right, right of way, which makes it more dangerous, or blind spots more times the driver needs to be around the sign, he or she should at least compensate the CHP or whoever for the danger. We get enough political crap in the mail. This is not a Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning, Board of Supervisors. Ann Riddle here, and I'm speaking to consent item one. Uh, parents were very concerned that this particular item was brought to us with two important aspects that should have been bifurcated because it's confusing to address the real problems inherent in what you're suggesting. One part of the policy has to do with licensing, and no one objects to that, or the fees. But once you start to talk about the second part of this, who has oversight, it's a very different issue. And you might be in favor of licensing, where you would never be in favor of changing the oversight to the planning department. I hope that that it wasn't something nefarious going on about combining those two items. I think we'll work on the plan that there wasn't. Uh, maybe you were just trying to be expedient, but this is not the place to be expedient. Marijuana businesses are complicated. They're problematic. 
They should not fall under the planning department. They need to follow under the sheriff's department. And for parents, we really feel that it's important that this Board of Supervisors be as transparent as it possibly can in all of its dealing with marijuana businesses. There's been too much reporting going on here in San Diego County and L.A. County regarding the deceit and payoff that goes on with marijuana businesses. I think for the safety of all of us and for transparency's sake, we need to keep oversight with the sheriff's department. And I think it really was a mistake not to hear from the sheriff when we first heard this project back in October. Thank you for letting me share our concerns. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning. My name is Diane Grace, and I'd like to address item one. I have worked tirelessly on many youth-oriented boards, as I am both a mother and grandmother, who want the very best for my children and their peers. As you look to transfer the oversight of marijuana businesses to the county's planning department from the sheriff's office, I believe that decision is highly problematic. Because marijuana storefronts, lounges, and manufacturing are extremely controversial, there needs to be the highest available oversight, which would be definitely the sheriff. Several weeks ago at a planning group I attend, they voiced their discontent with the planning department's decision regarding a smelly and noisy hemp grow that continues to ruin their neighbor's enjoyment of their own property. To me and others, it seems a more appropriate agency to handle this escalating and probably dangerous problem from the start would be the sheriff officers, not the planning department staff. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Hello, this is Kelly McCormick. I'm a public health educator, and I support the previous callers who um, object to moving cannabis regulation from the sheriff's department to the planning department. The sheriff's department has taken a lot of care and time to develop um, their processes for this, and the planning department simply is not ready to take this on. They're already overworked, and uh, it, since it is a business that has many aspects related to law enforcement, um, that's where it should stay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning, board. Uh, my name is Kathleen Lippitt. As a public health practitioner and advocate of unincorporated communities whose voices have been silenced on the whole entire issue of commercial cannabis operations in their communities, I think it is critically important that when the board puts together an agenda, an agenda that those agenda items clearly indicate what is going to be addressed. Frequently, they're obscured in language that it doesn't alert the public to what exactly is going to happen. I think a typical example of that was the marijuana framework for the future. That hardly acknowledged what the, what the county planned to do, which was to establish unincorporated marijuana businesses in unincorporated communities while they simultaneously removed their oversight ability to be able to weigh in on what was and was not in the best interest of their community. It does not help that you have a Sandag representative at, that does not represent unincorporated communities, and there is no one from, from the county board of supervisors who sits on the Sandag board who is from unincorporated communities. There should be a voice Supervisor Desmond or Supervisor Anderson should be able to be there. We have had 70 years of the tobacco industry's products causing devastating amounts of death and disease to all of us. 
And we have another 30 years that the tobacco industry lied to us about how addictive and deadly their products are. This marijuana industry is no different. In fact, they are the tobacco industry on steroids. And for, for the county to ignore the harms that marijuana does to youth, young adults, and all the related... Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning. This is Peggy Walker. I work in public health and prevention, and I also urge you to keep the Sheriff's Department in charge of this extremely critical job of marijuana licensing and oversight. It's too serious an issue to shift from the experienced, capable hands of the Sheriff's Department for cost-saving purposes, if that is your reason. The Sheriff's Department has experience in the area that planning department personnel do not have. It's a complex issue and would meet a complicated learning curve for the planning department. We all feel better knowing this process is in the hands of the Sheriff for safety and oversight insurance and considering this industry's association with crime. Please keep this in the capable hands of the Sheriff. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Truth. Item two says that so far, just for this one San Luis Rey River Park, over $27.7 million has been spent. They're planning on this park and the Rio Prado Park taking up over 1,500 acres of land. $3 million is being spent on only 49 acres and over $90,000 a year on land management. And this property is located directly off the 76, which means that the air is full of GHG, according to Jim and Nora. Item three is the construction contract for the Calavo Park for $8.9 million, plus over $7.5 million in project costs. A volunteer will live on the property for park security, which is weird. The building will include one dual electric vehicle charging station and two more in the future, even though the average person in Spring Valley can't even afford one of those toxic lithium electric cars. So, Nathan, you don't know jack about Spring Valley when it was District 2 forever. Item 5 says, quote, political campaign signage to help promote democratic values and free and fair elections. The county should waive the fee for permits to place those signs, end quote. What is this, Joel? Democratic values? Send those back to China. This is a republic. And free and fair elections? If only that were true, you and your colleagues in crime might not be here today. Item six, care is pretending to care about biodiversity and animal species, but yet she and the rest of you supervisors continue to push toxic lithium-based infrastructure, such as wind turbines, that are killing thousands of real endangered species, such as golden eagles and bald eagles, which are supposed to be protected by the county. The item references Tara's former employer, the United Nations, and a biodiversity crisis. Tara, stop trying to control everyone and everything on the planet using excuses like biodiversity. And quit trying to make the human race an endangered species. No to all of these items, as usual. Thank you. And Chair Fletcher, that concludes public, public comment on the consent calendar. With a motion by Supervisor Desmond, seconded by myself. Please call the roll. Thank you. Supervisor Anderson? Aye. Supervisor Desmond? Aye. And Chair Fletcher? Fletcher, aye. That motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present voting aye. Go to agenda item number seven, traffic advisory committee and related issues. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion by myself, second by Supervisor Anderson. Let's hear from our public speakers. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We have seven total requests to speak, two individuals in person and five requesting to speak by phone. I'd also like to note for the record, we did receive uh, one e-comment and that was in favor. Any members of the public that have requested to speak on this item by phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using those instructions that were provided to you. And we'll begin with the in-person speakers. I'd like to invite forward Mark and Audra, and you'll have two minutes to address the board. Username Audra. I'm pretty sure you guys don't have a quorum. 
You do? Because there's three of you? I thought they said Nora was here. Do you have, an, do you have a comment on I agenda do. item seven? I'm just I mean, trying to, to hold you seven. accountable, which is my job, thanks. I just don't get paid to do it. I just get assaulted for doing it. It's so great. Um, you said Nora was gonna be on, where'd she go? Why isn't she yes, here? Yes, council to confirm the Board of Supervisors has a quorum, that three of the five members are sitting here in person, is that correct? Yes, the board has All right. a quorum. All right, agenda item seven. Speak That's to the fine, item. but I'm saying Nora was supposed to be on the screen, where'd she go? Your comments are off topic. Whatever. Speak to item seven. Your whole, traffic advisory committee crap is BS because all you want to do is make it impossible for people to drive. Yeah, I'm on topic, Nathan. You just can't stand to hear anything that's good because you're filled with Satan. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, you're just going to de-incentivize people to drive basically because you don't want us in the unincorporated areas. You want us in densely populated areas where you can have our social credit score right, like the World Economic Forum wants, the reset, it's so great. It's not just a meeting. You're one of the young global leaders that is pushing this, and you're pushing San Diego straight into hell, because you're going there, and you want to drag us there with you. It's good, it's so great, so great. When are you going to get an electric vehicle, Nathan? Hmm? Practice what you preach. You let your car sit outside running when no one's in it. It's just sitting there. It's good. It's so smart. I'm glad that you're, you know, listening and doing what you're speaking. It's fucking. Next speaker, please. Advisory committee. To understand what these people are doing, you need to see Rosa Corey's video. Who is Rosa Corey? I finally have a little time to actually talk on one topic. Rosa, her specialty of expertise was land use and property valuation with the Department of Transportation, which if I'm not mistaken, Nathan is director of at the moment, besides doing this job. Um, whether there's a conflict of interest, you might want to consider that, um, uh, since he's also a member of the World Economic Forum which definitely is a huge conflict of interest and shouldn't be in any part of government. Um, so Rosa talks about this. Now, th this is the privatization of everything we own. They just keep buying more. Uh, a good example that you really need to consider, it, for those of you out there that are thinking, oh, this guy's a nut, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, explain this. We pay taxes on our roads, our freeways, our highways, and then they sell rights to some lane to a subsidiary corporation and charge us fees to use the road that we built with our tax dollars. That would be like if you hired someone to handle your, your household funds and they put a little meter in your driveway for you to park on your own property at your house. It's absolutely absurd and people are absolutely stupid or just uh, cowards to put up with it. It's all right to make a mistake. We've all been stupid, we've all been cowards before, but to keep doing it when you know and you've been informed is unexcusable. See Rosa Corey's video, uh, if you look up on YouTube, Rosa Corey part one, the real uh, title is a little bit longer, it's something like Beneath the Green Mask, but, and there are three parts I believe, you should see at least the first two, they aren't very long. Corey is spelled this way, K-O-I-R-E, Rosa Corey part one. Very important, or you'll never understand what they're doing. Thank you. We will now hear from those that have requested to speak by phone. Again, when it is your turn, if you could uh, turn to speak, you will be unmuted and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. I'd like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking, and we will begin with our first caller. Hello, my name is Gregory Bishop. I'm the pastor of Grace Covenant Church in Spring Valley, and uh, we're so grateful for the opportunity to talk about our request for a stop sign at the intersection of San Carlos Street and Kempton uh, Avenue, Kempton Street. And uh, my church is located right on, on the corner of this intersection. I've been here for the past four years, and 
I would say a, a week doesn't go by that I don't hear the screeching of tires and the beeping of horns. I've personally witnessed several accidents at this intersection. And it just so happens that our church is located kitty corner, also on that corner, to a retirement community called Covenant Living at Mount Miguel. Uh, we also have a preschool. We have mothers with small children coming and going. We also do four food distributions, so there's a lot of movement. I have here a member of my church who's a resident at the retirement community named Charlie Del Pino, and he has a statement prepared to give. My name is Charlie Del Pino. I live at a retirement community which is across the street from my church, and that's also near the intersection we're discussing. Hey, sir, sir, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't defer your time. If you'd like to speak on this item yourself, we're happy to have you be a speaker, but one, one person can't defer to the other time. We need each speaker to independently sign up and speak. Oh, okay, I'm sorry for that. That's okay, no, that's okay. But we'll just have the additional speaker dial in, and, uh, and then we will, uh, we will call him. What was your name, sir? Charlie Del Pino. Okay, Charlie, just hang on the line. We'll get through the speakers, and then we'll call you back. Hang on the line. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder if your time was up. You, you can finish your time if you'd like. Oh, I can. Oh, yes, good, can. good. Yes. Well, while I have the mic then, I, again, I just want to thank you so much for considering our request. Um, as a pastor, I have many members of my church from that retirement community who are crossing the intersection, and I'm sure you've seen the films that, or the video of it. it, it's on a steep slope, and then it flattens out, and then it's steep again, and people just come bombing up and down that hill, and if someone is walking in a certain part of the intersection, they're really virtually invisible until the last second, and uh, I, I, I hold my breath every, every Sunday and every time we have meetings, and we've got residents coming across the street, walking very slowly, and and just a, a, a few weeks ago, a, a resident at the retirement community, she was 81, Thank was you, walking sir. across. Thank you. Your time, your time is up. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Truth. The Bias Traffic Advisory Committee rears its ugly head again. Biased because Joel chose Urban Systems Associates President Justin Schlappi, who pushes smart cities, connected vehicles, intelligent transportation systems, master plans, and more. Hence the county's new local roadway safety plan written by TAC that nobody voted for that is implementing all of this garbage into the county one step at a time. Smart cars for stupid people that track their every mile and send that information to both government and business as well as law enforcement and their unnamed partners. While Jim dreams of connected cars, lights, and intersections, the reality is that studies have found that connected cars rarely avoid collision with pedestrians, even at slow speeds. Here are facts from a May 12th study on driving assistance systems by AAA. Quote, all test vehicles collided head-on with the foam car while it was partially within the test car's travel lane. A collision occurred 33% of the time, when a cyclist crossed the travel lane in front of the test vehicle. Rain affected the cameras and sensors these systems used, resulting in a crash which stopped vehicles in the lane ahead 17 to 33 percent of the time. End quote. Fantasyland, Jim. Time to exit the teacups. This tacky tack item is just pushing the U.S. Department of Transportation's complete streets plan to put as many hindrances in the way of drivers to deter and de-incentivize driving with obstacles such as roundabouts, bullbouts, bollards, extra crosswalks, more bicycle lanes, narrowed car lanes, lowered speed limits, and these dangerous always stop signs in La Presa, San Marcos, and Valley Center. Quit using pathetic excuses about safety when items like these are really about controlling our freedom of mobility. No. And we will go to our next speaker. My name is Charlie Del Pino. 
Uh, I'm speaking on item number seven. I live at a retirement community which is across the street from my church, which is at the intersection we are discussing. I walk to the church each week, sometimes more than once a week. First, I want to thank the Board of Supervisors for the opportunity to express my concerns about pedestrian safety at this intersection. I appreciate your willingness to listen to my requests. My concern is that it's unsafe for pedestrians to cross Kempton Street at this intersection. There's a marked crosswalk, but motorists do not always stop for pedestrians in the crosswalk. Part of the problem is that motorists driving north on Kempton Street come over the crest of a hill. The crest of the hill is about 300 to 500 feet south of the intersection, so drivers and pedestrians don't have much time to see one another. If there were if there were stop signs for the Kempton Street drivers at this intersection, this would greatly reduce the problem. Having four-way stop signs at this intersection would also help motorists who are on San Carlos or Acard Street who want to turn left onto Kempton Street. I sincerely hope and pray that this intersection will become a four-way stop intersection. Thank you. Thank you. And Chair Fletcher, that concludes public comment on this item. Thank you. We'll go to Supervisor Desmond. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, I also want to again thank uh, the Department of Public Works staff uh, to see this uh, North County getting attention on some of these uh, items. It's great to see that an always stop at Discovery and La Sombra has finally come before us. This is an intersection that's right between Lake San Marcos, which is in the county, and the city of San Marcos. So I understand the, uh, the work and effort uh, working with the city of San Marcos, with their traffic commission and our traffic commission, and, and working all that together. So I really appreciate There's a great example of local government, you know, city and the county working together in an intersection that definitely needed attention. So I want to say thank you very much for that uh, item. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Desmond. We have a motion by myself, seconded by Supervisor Anderson. Please call the roll. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. Supervisor Anderson. Aye. Supervisor Desmond. Aye. And Chair Fletcher. Fletcher, aye. That motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present and voting aye. We'll go to agenda item eight, sanitation number two, sunset review policies. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Supervisor Anderson. Please call forward the public speakers. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We have five total requests to speak, two individuals in person, and three requ requesting to speak by phone. I'd also like to note for the record, we did not receive any e-comments on this item. For any members of the public that did request to speak on this item by phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you, and we will begin with the in-person speakers. I'd like to invite forward Mark and Audra. You'll have two minutes to address the board. Mark, regarding uh, land use and property valuation, or uh, and the environment group here, um, again, Rosa Corey, who was an expert court witness, that's a person who can get ten thousand dollars in an hour for going to a court. They're considered so reputable. Um, who worked for the Department of Transportation as a, a district, uh, a uh, district chief. Um, her video. You can find it on YouTube, Rosa Corey, with spelled K-O-I-R-E. Part one, the real title is something like Beneath the Green Mask, et cetera. It's a little longer. But Rosa Corey, part one, will bring it up. There's three parts. You should see it. Uh, everything's being privatized. These people keep buying more and more land. And it doesn't even matter if they buy it for a good purpose and designate it for something good now. They can designate it to anything they want corporately later, anything. Uh, I also suggest that you see Deborah Javaris's videos on YouTube about um, the UN and Agenda 21, which uh, unconstitutionally, Nathan Fletcher, our chair, a member of the World Economic Forum, is totally for these globalist agendas. Uh, for instance, they've already decided years ago, contractually, in an agreement, 
uh, Joel, who's on uh, the board of Sandag, this organization that didn't exist when I was young, gives maybe $100 million grants to Southern California cities to do Agenda 21 goals. Like that you'll drive 20, was it 20 or 25 percent less by 2025. That's two and a half years from now. That's why your insurance has gone up. That's why your registration has tripled. That's why there are commercials saying you drive less miles, pay less. They want you out of your car. They want control. They want people out of the countries. They're going to stop paving the roads in the country. It's totally un-American. See Rosa Corey's video now. Use the name Audra. All your permits, codes, regulations is just a bunch of governmental overreach. The fact that we have to be told what to do with our own stuff is quite ridiculous. Um, and the fact that, you, I mean, the Williams Act says governments enter into contracts with private landowners for the purpose of restricting specific parcels of land to agriculture or related open spaces. So you're just telling people that they have to do whatever with their land, which is bogus. It's all because we've allowed you guys to step into a position that you're not supposed to be in. Like, we don't need to be asking you for permission to do stuff. You should be asking the people, because you're supposed to represent the people, which you do not. Um, but I just think it's interesting, too, that you won't look into fraudulent election machines, but you want to make sure that price scanners and cash registers are charging the correct amount. It's interesting. <laughs> but why look into something that could totally, you know, expose that there are fraudulent machines being used? That would be weird, right? but let's make sure that that cash register is getting those, you know, points in the right spot. It's ridiculous. And you guys are, um, just the fact that just to have a community event, you have to have a permit. It's like, we don't need permits to gather. It's like saying that for like, a, which actually on Saturday, there is a worldwide rally out here, which you would think, do we need a permit? No, we don't because you don't need to ask for permission to do that. But yet here you guys are just dabbling, because you need people's money, right? You need to tell them what to do, and you need their money so that you can just waste it. It's good. You guys are so good at doing absolutely nothing. We will now hear from those that requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you will be unmuted, and you will hear a recording that will say you begin your comments after the beep. I'd like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking, and we will begin with our first caller. Paul Henkin, um, this is the Sunset Review. Uh, the sustainability impact statement says, quote, updates proposed in today's action are meant to ensure that codes and policies are up to date, reflect current processes, and are needed to continue services and responsibilities to the region, end quote. Your responsibility is to make sure that your rules and policies are current and conform to state and federal law, which usually change fairly often. Delaying a sunset review by seven years, as you propose, is tantamount to abdicating your oversight responsibilities, as I said yesterday, which may bring serious legal repercussions in addition to the millions you've already forked over for jail death and other miscellaneous lawsuits. Uh, thanks for your attention and looking up from your computers every now and then. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Oliver Twist here. Just a quick observation about the Sunset Review today and the integration of new rules. Your new portions of Section 41.130 enact regulations requiring the use of helmets for those under 18 within county park premises. 
I point this out after yesterday's Sunset Review um, discussion, uh, which will then seemingly allow the use of drugs on public housing premises. There is thus a, gla a glaring and stark contrast uh, today that you want to integrate rules to save the lives of youth when it comes to recreational transportation, but yesterday not in their daily living conditions or their quality of life. I'm asking you to keep this in mind as you move forward with the sunset provisions from yesterday. Children's lives are not only valuable when it comes to protecting them from the risks of mobility recreation, but equally so when it comes to protecting them from the dire risks of living in crime-infested areas where drug use is openly tolerated. If you're serious about protecting the lives of kids, please continue to ban drug use in public housing. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Truth. That was a good point. This item 8 proves what I said about item 7. Board policy J38 is the complete streets policy. Attachment H says, quote, when streets are complete, they are convenient for people walking, bicycling, riding public transportation, and operating motor vehicles. Compliance with the complete streets policy will follow from implementation of the mobility element, active transportation plan, local road safety plan, and green streets guidelines, end quote. Nice to see that I'm always dead on with my research, but you better believe they don't really include motor vehicles. Jim, did you see the policy change about solicitor licenses? For example, for a vendor at a farmer's market, a person will no longer have their application denied if they have been convicted of any offense requiring registration or violation of the Uniform Controlled Substance Act. More drug use, Jim. Mind blown. And... Board policy F45 about pesticide use reduction is a joke. Many supervisors refuse to end the toxic aerial mosquito larvicide program that sprays 51 locations in the county with toxic pesticide products such as Natural G30, which is harmful if inhaled with an acute toxicity of Category 4, Four Star, which has an OSHA classification of carcinogenicity 2, may cause damage to organs through inhalation, is suspected of causing cancer, and Vectovac, which contains hazardous compounds such as carbon oxides and nitrogen oxides. Despite that information directly from the safety data sheets off the county website, board policy F45 about pesticide use reduction has no recommended changes by county staff. Business as usual. Thank you. And Chair Fletcher, that concludes public comment on this item. You'll go to Supervisor Anderson. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. I, I just wanted to point out that uh, on the Sunset Review, as, I, as we're going to go through it, agriculture is the leading industry in, in the region, and we continue to draw community members to local agricultural land for agricultural tourism and education. And uh, whether, the, whether they're experiencing apple picking or pumpkin farms or, or boutique wineries, our ag producers offer many valuable experiences to the public. Many of these agricultural tourism experiences are allowed in the unincorporated area where the land is zoned for agriculture. Uh, I'd just like to, when we move forward or when this comes back, to uh, add reference to the existing zoning ordinance definition of agricultural tourism uh, to this update uh, in the administrative code. It, it's there already but I want to make sure there's no confusion moving forward. Uh, this is so valuable to my district and I believe to uh, Supervisor Desmond's district that it's important we get it right the first time. Yes, staff, any comments on that or concerns? Thank you, Chair Fletcher. No concerns, Supervisor Anderson. If we could, Ryan, do you have the language by any chance? Could we just um, put that up? Do we just want to amend what we're doing today? Yes, exactly, because then when we bring it back for purposes of the second reading, we can incorporate it. It really is just Perfect. to have that cross-reference for purposes of the zoning ordinance so that members of the public are aware that while they may not need certain types of permitting, um, if they're going to have food or other activities, they may need to uh, receive food permits and others. Just to make a motion, I will accept Supervisor Anderson's amendment to include this in the vote we're taking today. In, uh, I'd just like to add what awesome staff work. Uh, we didn't have to wait 30 days. We got it done right now. 
All right, we have a motion by myself, seconded by Supervisor Anderson. Let's call the roll. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. Supervisor Anderson. Aye. Supervisor Desmond. Aye. And Chair Fletcher. Fletcher, aye. That motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present and voting aye. We will now resume non-agendized public communication. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We still have uh, 11 total requests to speak on matters not listed on the agenda, all coming via phone. So for those that have requested to speak via phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using the instructions per that were provided to you, and we'll give you a moment to do so. We will now hear from those that have requested to speak by phone. Again, when it is your turn to speak, you will be unmuted and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. Again, I'd like to remind the callers they should meet their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking, and we will begin with our first caller. And again, if you could please state your name before beginning your comments. Good morning, my name is Suzanne Hume. I'm the Educational Director and Founder of CleanEarthForKids.org. And it's so important that we take actions to protect the health and the development of children and protect the public. We need very much for the County of San Diego to stop toxic pesticides used in the parks and stop leasing lands to West Coast tomato growers using toxic pesticides banned in other countries. This is just really important. I was uh, poisoned by pesticides because the county leased land to West Coast tomato growers. And um, instead of taking legal action, I started a nonprofit and I take no salary. I am again asking you, as I have asked for five years, patiently waiting my turn, for you to stop using toxic pesticides in the parks. I now have a lung condition. And so when I see that the county is promoting wood smoke, like the women in the wild, um, and the county is not letting people know that wood smoke can cause an instant heart attack or asthma attack or stroke on the spot and is not using science about the harms of uh, burning wood. You know, um, it really um, is very upsetting and um, to me. So I'm also asking you to stop recreational wood fires and um, stop promoting wood smoke. Um, PM 2.5 is deadly, and everyone on the Board of Supervisors should know that and not allow this. We've got to protect our kids. Um, it's just really important, and, and everybody. Studies show that living near pesticides increases the risk of Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, asthma, lung, lung diseases and cancer, leukemia, lymphoma. I could just keep going on, okay? So um, to protect our kids, we need to make a change. Thank you from cleanersforkids.org. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning, Board of Supervisors. My name is Diane Grace. As a parent and after spending countless hours on parent and community boards, I am well aware of the unfortunate health outcomes, especially mental health issues that marijuana use causes for youth and young adults. I am associated with the National Association, One Chance to Grow Up, which is concerned that a huge public health crisis is only getting started regarding drug addiction and that lawmakers need to rein in the for-profit addiction industries like the sale of tobacco, marijuana, and CBD products. The marijuana industry has millions of dollars to spend on lobbying for policies that benefit their industry. Why wouldn't they? Most other industries do the same thing, whether it's pharmaceuticals, tobacco, or alcohol. Many industries use a portion of their business proceeds to lobby for policies that benefit them. As a voice for protecting kids, the problem is we don't have profits from an industry to finance work for needed changes. 
I wonder if we all really comprehend what are the consequences of having marijuana storefronts in our in our county with its pervasive signage and advertising. This visibility and promotion threatens, sabotages, and diverts the lives of young people who may well decide that an acceptable form of relaxation, diversion, or digression is getting high. Good health is precious, and the county should only involve themselves in those business activities that will enhance good health, especially mental health. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. My name is John Bodorf with Clean Earth for Kids.org. Rates of childhood leukemia and brain cancer have been increasing since 1976. Cancer is now the leading cause of death by disease among American children under the age of 15. And research shows air pollution and chemical exposure triggers cancer, especially in children. Children are surrounded by an estimated 350,000 manufactured chemicals and chemical mixtures. Reducing exposure to air pollution and chemicals is extremely important, especially to the health of children. So please consider a ban on public smoking, like Encinitas and Manhattan Beach, and stop the sale of all smoking products, including tobacco, cannabis, cigars, e-cigarettes, and vapes, like the cities of Beverly Hills and Manhattan Beach. And please take action to stop all smoking and vaping in multi-unit housing, as, as has already been done in 74 cities and counties in California. Up to 65% of the air in a multi-unit home can come from other units in the building. Secondhand smoke is a toxic air contaminant linked to cancer, lung infections, bronchitis, asthma, and many other health issues. Air purifiers do not get rid of secondhand smoke. It can travel through doorways, cracks in walls, electrical lines, and plumbing. There is no safe level of exposure to secondhand smoke. According to the CDC, 7 in 10 black children are exposed to secondhand smoke, and home is the main place where they are exposed. There's also thirdhand smoke, toxic residue from smoking that is left on surfaces and even in dust. It's also on the clothes, hair, and skin of smokers. Thirdhand smoke, which contains strong carcinogens, has been found to persist in houses, apartments, and hotel rooms where people have smoked. Studies show hand washing drops toxin levels on the hands, but they are back in 40 to 60 minutes later. So even if someone doesn't smoke around their kids, they are still exposing them to toxic chemicals that can interfere with brain development, causing things like ADHD. Third-hand smoke can also cause liver disease, cancer, and diabetes. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning, Board of Supervisors and Riddle here. Uh, because of my work on behalf of parent groups, I receive a tremendous amount of research regarding health issues, overwhelmingly of concern with the state of children's health, both mental and physical. I attended a recent symposium called Clearing the Air, and researchers from Stanford and the University of California at San Francisco spoke about the dangers of secondhand smoke to young people, to middle-agers, and anyone whose health has been compromised. When I think about communities of color, what I would want most for them is a better health outcomes, and they disproportionately live in multi-unit housing. Children disproportionately live in multi-unit housing, uh, say, as versus standalone housing. So they're being affected by secondhand smoke in so many more ways than other populations. And I think if we really care about communities of color, we would start with their health and all those factors that endanger it. These particular researchers spoke to us on the Clearing the Air uh, webinar regarding marijuana smoke, marijuana secondhand smoke. And the research has been accumulating rapidly. Of course, tobacco research has been with us for over 50 years, but now marijuana, secondhand smoke research is coming in as well from these great researchers and making it very clear that marijuana smoke is dangerous to the smoker and to everyone around them. At this point in the Board of Supervisors' history, you want 
the best health for your people. Enabling marijuana storefronts and other businesses in the unincorporated area does nothing that helps anybody's health. And I might particularly say I think it hurts the communities of color the most. This is not the time to do that. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. Truth. At yesterday's meeting, I noticed that former county supervisor Greg Cox censored himself when he went to utter Jesus' name during the invocation. That was strange and also sad. Did somebody tell Greg he wasn't allowed to mention Jesus during his prayer? But I want to give credit to Sheriff Anthony for standing up for the victims of crimes yesterday. I thought he would cower under the threat of losing funding or maybe that, that compact armored truck vehicle, but he didn't. Good for you, Anthony. But sad that so many people, including Nathan, spoke at that so-called truth forum in support of criminals that illegally entered our country and committed crimes as heinous as child molestation. Sexual assault against children, Nathan. Only 18 people were transferred and deported by ICE last year. How many rapists are still here? And yesterday, the Anti-Hate Crime Coalition was honored with a proclamation well, all they do is push hateful, divisive propaganda, and their ranks include a member of the ADL, which is a known spy organization. Here's an example of a headline from the L.A. Times, quote, ADL spy operation. Transcripts reveal nearly 40 years of espionage, end quote. That was from 1993. Imagine what they do now. And it's been great not having Tara these meetings. I mean, it's no different than usual, where she never looks up and speakers never see her face. She might as well always stay home with that behavior. And speaking of behavior, Nathan, you're great at proving how weak you are when you fear public speakers. So, the Worldwide Freedom Rally, Audra mentioned, will take place at Waterfront Park in downtown San Diego at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. this Saturday. So anyone that loves freedom, come on out. Maybe you'll even meet me. Who knows? You don't like evil that these people are doing? Then come downtown on Saturday. See you later. And Chair Fletcher, that concludes the request for non-agenda public communication this morning. That concludes the business before the board today. Hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we will see you all in December. With that, we stand adjourned. The next regular meeting of the board will take place on Tuesday, December 13th, 2022, at 9 a.m.